the Brad before my accident pretty much almost died like when I had my accident and I had to figure out who I am now. Like I'm a completely new person. I'm Brad Smaler. We're here at my home in uh, Haraki, Takpuna. Uh, I had a spinal cord injury four years ago and yeah, here I am. I was a professional wakeboarder. I started when I was 17, won a world title, decided I'd go to Orlando, and which is the mecca of wakeboarding. For me, it was paradise. Like I was there living my dream. We were both a little bit off that day and sort of one of those like, oh fuck moments because nothing else really describes that feeling at the time where you just, you know that you've screwed up. Basically the top of my shoulders impacted the ramp so it forced my head down into my chest and that's when it all went black. I just remember, you know, I was laying there and I, I knew I'd messed up and I knew that um, that this was serious, but I didn't quite know how serious. I thought I knew what depression was before my accident. The first maybe six months at least, every day was shitty. Every day was a down day. I was trying to stay so positive and I was so adamant that I was gonna make a full recovery and that I was gonna start moving again. And, and then next thing I'm in the spinal unit and there's other guys and girls coming in with same level spinal injury as me, but they're coming in after me and leaving before me with their arms working. And here I am trying, you know, putting every bit of effort in as I can and not getting those same results. Being paralyzed, like it feels like you're in a straitjacket, like trying to move when you can't move. Like even just laying in bed, you can't even roll over. You can't adjust your position if you're uncomfortable. And I just remember going in for a, an MRI and I'm laying there and, you know, over the speaker or whatever, the technician or whoever it was, was like, all right, we're about to get started. Make sure you try to lay still. And I was like, really, dude? Like, I left the spinal unit and then next thing I'm in the community and nothing's changed except me. I guess that was really the start of having to accept the changes and accepting what had happened. And I hated that word acceptance as well. Like people telling me that I had to accept. I guess I just didn't really um, know who I was anymore. I truly believed that a lot of what made me me was my physical abilities and attributes whether it was 90% of what I thought was me was physical, and then that's all gone, I'm left with 10%. Being fit and being active and, and being in good shape was really important. I guess that's something that, you know, as a contrast now, is something I've really had to learn to, to be okay with not being in great shape, um, you know, not having abs anymore and having a bit of a gut. Before my accident, you know, being a model, being six foot two, being a professional athlete, like, you know, girls were attracted to me. So I just enjoyed being single. I guess that's one of the curses of having such an incredible life before my injury was that um, the contrast is always going to be really tough. It's one of these like ego things that I've had to really work through in terms of like inadequacy and it's just been a work in progress over the last few years to really let go of all that pride. Yeah, just accept that this is how things are now. That was one of the big things, you know, going from being so independent to being completely dependent. Caregivers 24 seven, having to rely on other people to do things for me. Everything from showering to going to the bathroom. Literally, they have to help me with my bowels. And, um, you know, it's not something that I could do on my own anymore. I got to the point where I was just like I felt like I was gonna crack like each day for there was a few weeks that I just I I felt like you know all the, all these emotions and everything were just bubbling right under the surface and maybe I wasn't addressing them properly I was just trying to fight them off and stay positive and do more rehab and this and that and I wasn't really 
wasn't really addressing them and acknowledging them, um, these emotions. And it's to the point where I'd be having a conversation with someone and I just felt like I was about to burst into tears. That was when I went back to the spinal unit, spent a couple of weeks there, and I just decided that for those two weeks I was going to switch off all social media, sort of do some reading and just, you know, almost do some soul searching, kind of dig deep and figure out what it was that was causing these issues. And that was actually really helpful because um, the whole switching off social media thing, that was just, I was watching people wakeboarding, I was looking at attractive girls that I would have had no issue walking up to in a bar and buying them a drink or whatever, whereas now, like, what am I going to wheel up to them in my wheelchair? And then if they say no, I'm going to awkwardly, like, turn around. Like, it was just, I don't know, like, there's all these things, you know, whether it was that I felt like I was missing out because everyone else is doing what I used to do and what I felt like I should have been doing. I can't avoid those things. I can't completely switch off to watching my friends wakeboard. I just had to be, I guess, better prepared for, for those sorts of things and work through um, all of those emotions and just not let them affect me as much. I got talking with one of my friends and, you know, I'm talking away about what I've been up to and, he, and he's like, he's like, yeah, man, but, you know, how are you? And I was like, yeah, I'm all right. And I've been doing this and doing that. And, and he's like, no, but, but really, like, let's, I'm actually asking you seriously, like, how are you? Because what you've gone through is really shitty. So by sharing that and being able to talk openly about it with, with friends was, it was refreshing. It was really quite powerful. And we don't do that enough. Like, we don't talk about what's real enough. You know, I feel like I've done pretty well and I'm at the point now where um, day to day, like, pretty happy. I'm not, you know, miserable about my situation. Um, you know, I have my odd day that where I'm down about it, um, and I allow myself to have that and allow myself to work through it. But um, I mean, the, the happy moments now is just enjoying fun moments with friends, and it's it's definitely more about um, the smaller things. And it was put, I guess this brought you know a lot of perspective um, to what is important. So having learned a lot of things, uh, I have started to get into to speaking, um, you know, motivational speaking, or you know, doing corporate talks, or you know, I really want to start, um, you know, maybe go and speak at some schools and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's something I enjoy. I I love being able to to share my knowledge of my journey and um, be able to inspire people. I want you guys to all get out of your seats, stand up and give one big hoorah for B-Rad. It was incredible the support I got after my injury, the amount of fundraisers going on in different parts of the world. and It was incredible to, to have that support and have not only my friends, you know, whether it's here or in the States, but people that I didn't even really know. Like I'd maybe encountered them for a, a minute or two at an event, but next thing they're throwing a big fundraiser or they're putting an I Ride for Brad sticker on their board. Incredibly humbling. I didn't think that I'd impacted that many people, but it was actually kind of strange. I'd, it was almost like having a funeral, but being able to be there for it. When someone dies, people will all of a sudden speak real things about how they felt. Again, we don't do that enough. And so for me to have been able to feel that love and see the amount of support and the amount of people that whose lives I impacted, and um, that was, yeah, it was pretty, um, pretty mind blowing. I guess one of the positives is anyone who would be attracted to me or would want to be in a relationship or anything like that, it's probably for a much more genuine reason. Yeah, and I guess now anyone who, you know, is going to get involved in my life, they're there because of me and who I am. Um, not so much what I do and what I look like, you know, physically and abs and muscles and whatever. Like it's, yeah, just more, more real, I guess.